Hello again. Our special guest for today was once called the modern day Buster Keaton. He's, of course, <laughs> very embarrassed, and he's David Jason, who first sprang to our attention as long as, go as 1968, when he featured in the zany TV show Do Not Adjust Your Set. Remember it? And now, of course, he's well known to us all as Del Boy in Only Fools and Horses. Good morning. Good morning. Of course, you're rehearsing for another part at this very moment. No. And we heard you over Christmas um, in Wind in the Willows. Yes, you did. Yeah. did. What part was I playing? You were Toad. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. There like, you are. See, I'm very sensitive about Wind in the Willows because when I was at school, they cast me as Ratty. Just by yeah, looking at me. Why would they do that? Now, well, why did they cast it? you as... Funny they should say that. <laughs> why did they cast you as Toad? Because of my charm and personality and the suits that I wear. Uh, <laughs> and the way you drive. And the way I drive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I was uh, very interested to learn is that you're called Jason. Can I give this away while you're, while your surname is Jason? Are you going to give away? Because your, your, your real surname isn't Jason, is no. it? It's something else. It's but you something. chose Jason because of a hero. Yeah. Jason and the Argonauts. That's right. He's my hero as well. Yeah. Did you see yeah. the films over Christmas? Yeah, I love all those, those terrible monsters that do that. <laughs> and the skeleton men. Love it. And all Great the, animation, oh, lovely stuff. It's fantastic. Yeah. So that, and that's the real reason why yeah, you became Yeah, what, what happened was that um, years ago when I was at school, um, the teacher used to read stories, and you know the way the teachers, when people read you a story, it's a wonderful thing. If you get a good, good storyteller, it, they can paint pictures for you, you know, in your mind. And this teacher was particularly good. She could read particularly well. And she used to read an episode of that, of uh, Jason and the Argonauts. It was uh, something like every other day, and it was a thing to look forward, like five to three. All the kids here with their arms like that on the desks going. Mm. And completely transported by this teacher who read the story and it was such a clear image in my mind I mean she made it so exciting that I never forgot it and then the hero Jason was this marvelous credible Superman why did uh, you pick the name then well what happened was when I was oh, Nick. <laughs> is he a friend of yours he's a friend of nobody's at the moment how old is he <laughs> how old are you 27 or is he 28 <laughs> keep talking kid <laughs> you didn't Go mean on, it did you no of course I didn't yes right. he did I knew he did <laughs> But anyway, what happened was that when I was, wanted to become an actor, um, there was already an, a, an actor called David White, which is my real name. Ah. So you can't have two actors with the same name. So they asked me, uh, would I like to change my name? And I tried one or two others, and then suddenly for no reason, because I had never thought of Jason and the Argonauts really since that time, just for no reason, like sort of, what, nearly 20 years later, I suppose, suddenly the name just went <whistles> and walked right across my mind. And I just said, well, what about Jason? She said, hold on a minute, and she went through her files and looked through her files and said, yeah, there isn't anybody called Jason. There's one or two very close, like there's Michael Jaston, and now there's an actor called David Jansen. Yes. So I'm always getting, yes. we're always getting confused mm -hmm. with each other. I had his taxi. He's always on the run, him, isn't he? No, you see, even you, you don't know. David, David Jansen Jansen. was the American actor. He used to speak like that all the time, like all these American actors. A fugitive. Fugitive. Yes, that's what but I meant. There is another, there's a British oh. actor oh. called David Jensen. Why am I giving him a plug? He's yes. in pantomime at the moment. <laughs> no, he's in pantomime at Shaftesbury at the moment, and everybody thinks it's me. <laughs> and it's not me, it's this other very nice, very lovely actor, David Jensen, but I'm Jason. You had an unlikely, apart from the name, you had an unlikely start as an actor as well, because you trained as a car mechanic, didn't you? What <laughs> are you laughing at, down there? <laughs> it's my brother, I think, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, I, I did. How did you do that? Ah, I see. You really <laughs> are clever. No, no, no many people much. know that, actually. No, what, that but I'm the clever. first thing that, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is painfully obvious. Thank you. <laughs> now, that when I left school, that was the first thing that I did. I was, uh, for a year, I, before I could become, I was lucky, really, because I was what they called a, I don't know, a grease monkey. Well, that is the thing that, as a 15-year-old, as I was then, you couldn't, become an apprentice until you were 16. So you spent a year just making the tea and scrubbing the loose, things like that. And I did that for a year and I was lucky because when it came to signing the apprenticeship forms, I realized that this was not the way to spend your life underneath dripping cars mm. getting covered in oil. Well, that's, yeah, that's interesting, nobody knows that. But of course you, you were a very keen amateur actor at the time anyway, mm. weren't you? So you've always had stars in your eyes to a certain extent. Well, yeah, but when I was started at school, I was made, I was forced by the headmaster to be in the, uh, the school play. Because one, one of the kids had got measles. Uh, he was playing the lead in this, this play, and uh, he got the measles. 
And I, I was always one of these uh, the, the kids at school, and being very short, I was then, and being sort of the weedy, the weed of the bunch. All these guys in my class were big fellas, you know, and they punch you in the nose just as soon as look at you. Well, the only way to survive was to sort of do impressions of the teachers and muck about, you know, fall down and uh, be an idiot. Be the clown. That's right. Mm. So a lot of people started that way, but it was very true. And so, of course, the, the staff, the school staff, were not idiots either. They could see this. So when this boy got the measles and fell over and uh, they needed uh, someone to take his place, they, they chose me. And I, I refused. I wonder where he is now. Well, I hope he survived the ruddy measles. <laughs> that's all I can, that's all we can hope for. David, it's smashing talking to you.